All right, thanks for joining me today. I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO of Owner Insight, and I'm excited to bring you an interview today with Mara Neville Thomas, the author of Personal Productivity Secrets. Awesome book. And the new book, Work Without Walls. Mara, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I, you talk about attention management. I do. And I've heard that for a while, So, I, and I know what the answer is, but I don't think anybody else out there that might be watching, it's probably new, because I'm sure... People are like, oh, you're you know, a productivity trainer or you're a time management trainer and you hate that, right? So what's attention management? It's not really that I hate it because time management is necessary. Productivity, certainly, to me, it's about uh, living a life of choice yep. and, uh, and being the kind of person that you want to be. Time management, to me, is an outdated idea because the idea of time management, the idea that that we have to manage all of our details. I think people call that time management. Yeah. And of course we have to manage all of our details. But everybody knows you can't manage time. The truth is with all of the technology that we have now that's come about in the last 20 years, yep. how you manage your time is only relevant to the extent that you also devote your attention. Even if you manage your time and you say at nine o'clock I'm gonna do this thing, right? And then nine o'clock rolls around and you're like, yeah, here, here I am, I'm gonna do this thing, <laughs> right? And then you start to do it, maybe it's a Word document, right? You open the Word document and you're like, okay, all right, this thing, and, and the, oh, look, there's an email. Oh, that's, that's, who's that from? Okay, no, okay. Squirrel, yeah. Right, right, <laughs> no, okay, now I'm gonna do this thing. Oh, look, a text message, hold on, let me just get that, right? No, no, where was I, this thing? And then if you spend the time that you set aside to do the thing, like that, yeah. switching back and forth between all the interruptions and and the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it will take. Studies show it will take way more time to get done, and the quality will be lower. Yeah, and so it doesn't matter that you managed your time because that you said at nine o'clock you were going to do that, and at nine o'clock you sort of did it. But the end experience will be much different than what you intended if you didn't also control your attention on the task at hand. Yeah. So attention management to me is much more important than time management. That's awesome. We, um, you know, I think I've told you in the, uh, before, one of the things that we did with our software is we tried to create a collaborative platform for the entire construction team to focus that attention on the tasks that are really critical and important. And I know one of the challenges that we hear day to day with everyone, because there are so many ways for them to, uh, you know, for, for uh, things that are competing for their attention, right? You know, that there's a lot of distraction and a lot of issues with um, trying to just stay focused to get that one thing done. And so what we've tried to do is create a clear and concise path for communication, place to get reporting and information and data. But what are some of the traps that you see, especially, I know you've done some work with folks in the construction space, but what are some of the traps that you find people fall into relative to that? The major trap is that we have way more control than we think we have. We have way more control. Wait, than we do? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> way more control than we exert, right? So in order to control your attention, there are really three three areas to think about. Yep. Number one is you have to control your environment. If you are trying to get something done and there are just people walking by you all the time, people interrupting you all the time, you're never going to get anything done, at least not in a meaningful way. If you're, if you're, if your work ever requires more than a minute or two of your sustained attention, and I think most people's does, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> then you have to carve out that time where you are uninterrupted. So, you know, leaders tell me, well, I like to have an, I, I like to have an open door policy. Well, open door policy was never intended to mean open 24/7, 365, right? right? Open door means you are available sometimes, but not that not anybody, all the time. right? Yeah. Not that anybody can interrupt you all the time. So you have to take control over your environment. If you have a door, an office with a door, great, close the door. If people walk through it, you have to sort of enforce that boundary that you set because if they just walk through it anyway, now the door ceases to mean anything. Yeah. So people walk through it, and you have to say, actually, can can you come back when the door is open? Yeah. So you have to honor those boundaries. And you sort of have to establish that because, you know, it, some people might feel com un not comfortable um, feeling like that comes across as rude, but really yeah. what it is geared towards is making you productive, which helps yeah. be more available when you actually do have that conversation, right? Yeah, and one of the ways to get around that is I don't want to be rude thing is to give the people the message, be very clear about the message before they've interrupted yeah. you. Because once they've said, hey, do you have a minute? You're already interrupted, right? <laughs> yeah. If you can prevent that, ahead of time if you know people are just gonna walk 
through your door when you close it, then maybe put a sign on it, right? That says, please do <laughs> yeah, not yeah. disturb, whatever. And if you don't have an office with a door, you still can control your environment. You can put on headphones, you can put a sign on the back of your chair, you yeah, can yeah. put a sign on your wall. I mean, they even have um, like red, yellow, green stoplight things that sure. you can sit on the back of your, on the top of your cubicle to tell people. So if you can prevent them from interrupting you to begin with, then you don't have to worry about feeling rude. That's awesome. Um, so that's the first thing, control your environment. Second thing is to control your technology, right? I don't think any of us went into the store wherever you bought your, your smartphone and said, here's my money so everybody in the world can interrupt me all the time. 24-7, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And yet that's the way we behave. Oh my God, if my, if my phone dings, I have to check it. Yeah. I have to check it or I want to check it, one of the two. Yep. Um, but not to make the technology manufacturers sound like the bad guys, but um, but they are studying how to get you to interact with their software and of their course. devices. And so, so they're trying to steal your attention. And so your only defense against that is to learn how to control your attention. Absolutely. And part of the way to control your attention is to control your technology. So um, when you're in email, you ever try to, to clean out your inbox? And, All the time. And you don't get very far because <laughs> right. every time you answer one, there's a, a new one. That would be like... If, if you were digging a hole and I were standing across from you shoveling the dirt it. back in, yeah. right? So the only way that you can manage the email that you already have is by stopping the new mail from coming in. Absolutely. Right? So if you're on a client, you can work in offline mode, right? You can, um, if, if, you're, if, you, you know, if you have Outlook or something, you can work in offline mode or Apple Mail, work in offline mode. Um, if you're using Gmail in a browser, Gmail is fine, but if you access your email in a browser, then you have a lot less control. Yeah. Um, but Gmail does have offline mode as well, so you can do that. Certainly, you should shut off any of your indicators, your alerts, because, I mean, whether it's on your computer or on your phone, do you really need some sort of indicator to tell you that you have new email? Right. No. It, yeah. it, it, you'll know it. Right? right? Let right. me just end the suspense for you right now. You have new email. <laughs> right? Well, we've been so, here. We both have probably absolutely. a dozen emails. Absolutely. Yeah. So all of those things do is interrupt you. Shut off your notifications. You don't need you know, breaking news and somebody liked your Facebook post. You don't need all that stuff to, to ding your phone to yeah, tell yeah. you that. They're all going to be there. So you have to control your technology instead of letting it control you. Learn how to use do not disturb mode if you have an iPhone. I have, to, I have to give you that credit. Um, when I read uh, Personal Productivity Secrets a few years back when it first came out, and this is an amazing book for any individual that is really trying to get control of their attention. Um, that was one of the, the tips I took away, which is, you know, you're on your time and you have the ability to control that. And the do not disturb on my iPhone, not, you know, immediately logging into my email, looking at my tasks at hand, I think has increased my productivity significantly. Mm -hmm. And it's also given me a little bit more, um, I would say confidence and control over my day yeah. because I don't feel like I'm beholden to everybody else. And I've made it fairly clear with people that I will not always respond to email um, in 30 seconds. It used to be you'd get um, somebody in the office who would say, hey, I sent you that email. Did you read it? Um, I just sent you that email. Like, mm -hmm. now let's check those words, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you just sent it. I, I know I have it. I have probably not gotten to it in the five seconds it took you to walk across the office to tell me you sent it. And so, you know, trying to empower myself to be able to control some of those mechanisms have been great strategies. Yeah, and what I find is that people in the construction industry especially tell me that, well, yeah, but I don't have that kind of luxury, right? I, right. I, I need to be available. I've got all these projects going on. But the thing is, if you have any other work to do that is your responsibility, then you have to be unavailable sometimes. And I understand that it can't be for hours at a time right. or days at a time as much as you might like to, but what about just 15 minutes every hour? Or like an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon where you just put yourself in a little bubble, right? You close your door, or you yep. put those headphones on, you turn off all of your notifications, you go offline, and you just get your stuff done. You'll do it faster and better Absolutely. than, than if you try to just multitask all the time and do a little bit of everything all the time. I understand that people are in demand and they can't be unavailable for long stretches of time, but even 15, 20 minutes every hour is gonna is going to uh, exponentially increase the productivity. Absolutely, and you know, I think what you are 
you know, sort of the point that you make with the uh, book Work Without Walls is that you're trying to help those leaders of those, you know, organizations understand it's a culture thing, right? Sometimes the boss is the biggest problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, and I've seen it. I've, I am a boss and I can yeah. see, you know, the, the tendency to do that, especially now that we utilize a tool like Slack, you yeah. know, or mm -hmm. instant message or whatever. It's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking for an answer quickly. I wouldn't have asked it if it wasn't important, but at the same time, you have to take that step back and realize it may be a priority for you, but is it a priority for the other person and is it a convenient time? And so we've gone in a couple of times, um, we've gone to zones where we basically go do not disturb for the whole team so people can get you know massive amounts of work pushed out and done. Yeah. And I know one of the complaints that I hear from a lot of our clients at Owner Insight is that you know they, they do struggle with that because they are sort of in demand at all times. And yet I think a lot of them make that assumption, but you know, if they were to go back to their leadership and say, hey, look, would you rather me have a quality piece of work done or would you rather, you know, just an average piece of work done because I was you know, trying to do five things at once, I'm sure that the leader is going to tell you what direction that they want you to head, which is the more quality oriented approach, right? Absolutely. I work with a lot of CEOs and I ask them, does the work that your people do at your company? require more than two minutes of their sustained attention ever. Yeah. <laughs> and do you give them that? Yeah. You know, the answer is always yes and usually probably not. Yeah. Right? So there's going to be some times where people can just, and, and not only is it better for the quality of your work, but it's better for your mental health because you're not feeling that frantic, frustrated, being pulled in a million di different directions kind of feeling like you have that like I can't even have a thought in my right. head, right? Because there's just so much going on and that's not a, that's not that's a really stressful way to live. Well, and it's funny that you mentioned that because one of the questions that was posed by uh, one of our clients that knew we were going to do this interview today is that, you know, the the constant deadlines and all the things that are are sort of chipping away at our time and our attention really does cause stress. What do you suggest for someone that really finds themselves in that stressful position? Do you have any tips or tricks that you could offer? Yeah. Most people don't have a really good way to manage all of their responsibilities, all of their actions, their tasks, their workload, their priorities. Most people just um, use some combination of remembering, writing things down on a piece of paper, um, sticky notes, flags in their email, maybe some stuff on a dry erase board, right? Yep. They have all of this stuff everywhere. And the truth is, I mean, that that would be like trying to do a puzzle with the pieces scattered all over the house. Yeah. Right? You, you Not only can you not, not only is that not an efficient way to do the puzzle, you also don't even know how big the puzzle is when the pieces are scattered all over the house, right? right? I mean, you can sort of glance in every room and be like, I don't know, it looks like maybe this is a 500 piece puzzle, but in reality, it's probably like a 2000 piece puzzle. Yeah, yeah. And all of your actions are the same way, all of the stuff that you have to do. So you really have to keep everything in one place. You have to have a really um, useful place that is easily accessible to you, um, that is easy to manipulate. Most people tell me that they write stuff down in order to help them remember. Yeah. My point is that you should write it down so that you don't have to remember. Oh, that's a great point. Right, because yeah. you're never... That's excellent. Right, people are going to make these lists and then they just read the lists and read the lists and read the lists in the, in the attempt to not forget anything. But the idea is that if you had a system that would... Uh, serve up what you needed when you needed it, then you don't have to remember it anymore. And now your brain is free to to problem solve and to be innovative and to come up with ideas and to be creative and all the things that your brain is really good at. That's fantastic. That's really good. I've got a question for you. So uh, those folks that might watch this video, um, clients or prospective clients of Owner Insight, how could they benefit from training that you do on site with their teams? Two ways. Number one, it, it, from the individual perspective, most people don't think about the way they work and, and if that is serving them. Most people don't think about how they manage stuff. They just come in and they do it. Yeah. Which which means that it's not it's not designed with intention. And if it's not designed with intention, then there's always gonna be room for improvement, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so this is an opportunity to shine a light on the way you work and to and to and to learn a system that lowers your stress by knowing that you have everything in one place. That you will that you will have it when you need it. That nothing is going to fall through the cracks because most people feel um, the stress of most that most people have is everything that they're not doing right now. Yeah. Oh my God, I got a million things and it's going through your head all the time. But if you can know what you're not doing now, then even if you're not doing it, you can be like, okay, this is what I'm not doing, and it's okay yeah. that I'm not doing that. And so then you can let it go. 
So that's at the individual level. The organizational level is not that different. Mo the, co the corporate culture usually um, comes about also without intention. It's usually formed by the habits, primarily the habits of the leaders. And often the leaders aren't so great yeah. at managing all of their details either. And so now you've got this unintentionally frantic, um, uh, really fast-paced environment that where nobody can really bring their best work. Yeah. And so, so I offer training for leadership and training for individuals that gives them an opportunity to look at the way things are done and improve them. Absolutely. Would you um, suggest that the training be done for the leader first? and then the individuals or do you see it you know more successfully implemented the other way around it can it, it works both both ways um, if if everybody has including the leadership has heard the same message for here's how i manage my myself yeah and then we have the separate section with with the leadership then then they can not only have it for themselves but how they model it and how it affects the culture and the organization and, and how their own behaviors are and how the company policies are influencing their ability to get to implement everything that they learned productivity best practices sometimes i find uh, i think this is true for any kind of training um, is that unless the leadership is really committed to the training it's not going to have a long-term effect at yep. the organization and so if all of the leaders aren't necessarily 100 percent on board then it can be useful to do sort of a leadership introductory session so that they have an understanding of you know most people leave the training and go oh yeah that makes perfect <laughs> sense right and so then that can help generate the buy-in and then the training for the rest of the organization is actually a lot more effective that's fantastic. Well, where can people find your books? Anywhere books are sold. Amazon, okay. uh, my website, which is regainyourtime.com. Uh, if you get your books on uh, on on Nook or on uh, Apple or wherever Kindle. you buy books. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Kindle, yeah, anywhere. Yep. Awesome, fantastic. And the books are Personal Productivity Secrets and Work Without Walls by Mara Neville Thomas. I highly, highly recommend our clients, our prospective clients, check these books out because they will make a difference without question. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks.